Hi everyone, hope all of you are well. One of the most irritating things to see on the application requirements for a job or admissions to a program is that of a reference letter. One reason is that most of us probably like to complete these applications way later than we should, and while writing your personal statements and your CV is something you can do relatively quickly and importantly by yourself, getting a reference letter is a process that takes time and another person. Another reason probably is that it's kind of awkward. You're asking someone to write a letter praising you to the point that its intended reader is supposed to take it as a basis to hire you or admit you. Relying on a letter is quite a rigid and old-fashioned system, and not in line with our ability to communicate dynamically and instantaneously in the 21st century. But alas, it remains a requirement for many applications. As a college or university student, often you may need a reference letter from a professor. Or it may not be required from a professor, but your lack of work experience makes it such that a professor would be the best source of a reference letter for you. So the question that many students then think about is, how can I get a reference letter from the professor? What should be my strategy? If you start asking around about this topic, the prevailing wisdom is that one of, if not the most important thing, is to achieve the top mark, or a very high mark at least, in the professor's class. While of course a top mark helps distinguish you from other students and gives the professor something to write about you, it's not the be-all end-all of getting reference letters. So that means that if you get a top mark you aren't guaranteed a reference letter, and if you don't get a top mark you're not barred from getting any one either. It's simply one useful aspect. As I just touched on, think about what the letter itself will contain. Let's say you can get any professor to write a letter for you. Ask yourself, what can they write about you? They can only write about you what they know about you. And that's going to be limited to the interactions and the work you've done either with them or for them, whether in the context of a course or elsewhere. So the implication is that the more interaction and work you've done with a professor, the more source material for the professor to write about you. Of course, in certain contexts, having more interactions with the professor is a lot simpler. For instance, if you're in a very hands-on course with only maybe 10 students that involves working directly with a professor on a project, as opposed to a 100-student lecture that only has a midterm and a final exam. Putting aside the structure of your courses, here's how I think you should think about it. Think about it like you are trying to build a strong and productive relationship with a professor, and the reference letter is simply a byproduct of that relationship rather than the goal itself. A strong relationship with a professor is often built upon regular contact and communication, common interests and ideas, and cooperation on tasks, studies, and projects. Because of this, when you're trying to figure out which professor you want to get a reference letter from down the line, you want to select a professor who has a field of study or works or researches in that study where you find the area genuinely interesting and would like to learn more about it or even contribute to it if given the opportunity. You don't want to pick a professor for superficial reasons like how well known they are or how their reference letter would look on your application. Because if you don't like the work or the opinions or even personality of that professor, it's going to manifest in the relationship that you can build with them and by extension the quality or even possibility of a reference letter from them. So, as you should expect, if your goal is to actually build a relationship with a professor, there's no real shortcuts there. Just as there's no shortcuts in building a relationship with anyone, this is going to be something that's ongoing and will take effort. Which is why I mentioned you want to pick a professor who genuinely interests you. Otherwise, you'll just be making things more difficult for yourself. In terms of how you should best navigate this relationship, the first and most important step is to get informed. Get acquainted with the professor's educational background, the courses they teach and have taught before, their research area, their academic works, their media appearances, and their publications. Some people might think this is kind of awkward because it feels like you're stalking them, but it's really not because it has nothing to do with their personal or social life. You're interested in their professional career. Now, if you happen to have some similarities personally, like you were born in the same city or you're both fans of the same sport or something, of course you're not forbidden from bringing these up at some point. For instance, for small talk and things like that. But generally, non-professional topics are better left for when you're more closely acquainted rather than when you're first getting to know each other. Once you know more about their work and their research area, pick a topic from among their current and active research topics and study up on it. This would include going over the work that they have contributed in this area to know what their perspective and ideas are in this field. Assuming that you are an undergraduate student, oftentimes this material will be way more complex than the level you have studied thus far in your education. This is perfectly fine. You definitely don't need to understand everything. The main thing is to put effort into this research so that you have at least a basic understanding and that you could communicate that basic understanding to your professor. In fact, those things that you don't understand from this research would serve as a great basis 
for discussions with the professor. When it comes to the course itself, the course that you're taking that the professor is teaching, obviously you want to have that same initiative in studying, because presumably this course is in some way related to the field that the professor researches, otherwise why would they be teaching it? The byproduct of putting in a lot of effort in this course is that you will achieve a high grade on exams or assignments. If the course allows for participation, try and be as active as possible to show your high level of interest, and where appropriate, see if you can make references to the professor's research that you have familiarized yourself with. But I stress that you should do it where it naturally fits in and not just to show off. As you are building this momentum inside the course, you want to begin engaging with the professor outside of the course. This would mean engaging in discussions with the professor through their office hours, whether in person or virtually as may be the case these days. And through these one-on-one -on -one discussions, you want to engage again these areas of inquiry and interest related to the course, as well as areas beyond the scope of the course and related to the professor's own research. Eventually, and there is no formula for this, it's more about the feeling that you have regarding how well your relationship with the professor has developed. Once you are having these discussions with the professor with some regularity, you want to ask the professor if there's anything that you can assist him or her with pertaining to the course, or if possible beyond the course and related to their research or work. And you are asking them this because you have demonstrated such a keen interest in this academic field and in them as a teacher, as a researcher, and as a mentor. If they say no because they genuinely have nothing that you as a student might be able to assist them with, that's fine. It means they still value you and your efforts, but it just so happens there's nothing to work on them with right now. Keep your relationship going, keep engaging with a professor, and something might turn up. They could also say no because they don't think highly enough of you. That's fine too. For whatever reason they say no, you can ask if they have colleagues, meaning other professors or academics, who do have something that you can help with in that same field, and see if they can refer you to them, which opens up the possibility of a whole new relationship in that direction. But even if that happens, don't just give up on what you've been building with this professor. Now, if they say yes and they do offer you some task or assignment or whatever it is, accept it regardless of how small and insignificant it might be. Your expectation doesn't need to be to help co-author with this professor some great paper. Everything starts out small, perhaps to get a better sense of trust and understanding with you. If you genuinely value and are interested in what this professor does, then there's no reason to let your pride get in the way and you should be willing to build towards bigger things. You have to again remember that what you have embarked on is building a professional relationship, and the reference letter is simply a byproduct. The more work you do with the professor, the more context they have about what to write. But even if they gave you small tasks and you did an enthusiastic and great job at those small tasks, they still only have positive and useful things to say about you. The only caveat I would offer to what I've said in this video so far goes back to the early stages of when you're first engaging with a professor that you have decided to try and build this dynamic with. If after talking to them more closely and getting a better sense of their area, you start to get the feeling that you're really not interested then feel free not to pursue it with them further and look for another professor and another field of study. It could be that once you got a better sense of their research area, it just didn't have the same appeal to you that you thought it did. Or frankly, it could be that you just can't seem to get along with them or like them as a person. Don't force yourself to like the professor if you find them unbearable for whatever reason. You can only know how someone is once you get to know them a bit better, so this sort of thing happening is no surprise. But my point is that if it does happen, don't feel compelled to have to try and build the relationship with them because it's only going to be painful for you. Feel free to restart your search and see if you can find someone that is a better fit for you and your interests. I hope you found this discussion on how to get reference letters from professors helpful. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Until next time.